Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us for the C2 Smart Center webinar series. I'm John Patinos. I'm a project manager at the C2 Smart Center, a US DOT designated Tier 1 University Transportation Research Center tasked with leveraging recent advances in big data and technology to solve today's most pressing urban mobility challenges. A few quick admin notes before we begin. As you've seen, the webinar is going to be recorded and uploaded to the C2 Smart Center YouTube channel. Uh, we love questions, so if you have uh, questions, comments, suggestions about the research you'll hear about, I'd like to encourage you to ask our presenter in one of two ways. You can either use the Q&A button at the bottom of the screen, or you can raise your hand and I'll unmute uh, you for you to ask our presenter directly. Otherwise, I'll read out your questions at the designated time at the end. So today we're really happy to be joined by our partners at the University of Washington. They're gonna be discussing their research funded largely in part by USDOT. Dr. Zhu Gang Jeff Ban is a professor of the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering at University of Washington. His recent research focuses on applying mathematical, mathematical modeling tools and transportation principles to investigate the system effects of emerging technologies such as CAVs and shared mobility. And he's also our Associate Director for Technology and Data Management. Uh, joining him are uh, Ohei Anga and Yuran Zhang. I think Yuran is running a few minutes late, but they are doctoral students in the civil and environmental engineering departments at UW. Ohei's research covers transportation simulation model development, automated driving and controls, and object detecting and tracking. And Yuran Zhang's research interests focus on transportation data bias, traffic network simulation, and drone applications in rural, isolated, tribal, and indigenous communities. So uh, without further ado, Professor Ban, would you like to take it away? Okay, um, can everyone hear me? Um, so, yeah. um, so Yida is running a few minutes late. Um, oh, hey, do we have the presentation up? Yeah, okay, yeah, let me share, screen, um, share my screen. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. All right. You could just put that. Yep. Perfect. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, thank you, John. Um, I'll get started from here. Um, so thank you everyone for joining the webinar. Um, we'll be uh, very glad to talk about um, this uh, ongoing research um, that we um, um, have been working with uh, C2 Smart um, on developing a multi-scale vehicle traffic demand simulation platform. So. Um, okay, next slide. So it, I'm not seeing the full screen. So okay, um, yeah, it was mm -hmm. full screen before. Okay. Hmm. Just okay. Uh, yeah, hold on a second. Um, I think the uh, you just press the slideshow button. Right. Um, and then Perfect. Okay, so we'll. Yeah. Okay, yeah. we'll. I I introduce an introduction, motivation, and also objective and scope. Then I will let Ohei and Izan talking about some of the design framework, the details, and how we develop um, everything, and in the end, some ongoing work uh, with this research. So next slide. So um, I think the main motivation is that uh, transportation system is by natural um, is a multi-model and multi-scale systems. You talk about, you know, we, we, we understand multi-model, right? So different modes in the system, but also it's multi-scale in the sense that we have individual vehicles and persons and uh, users. Um, and we also have traffic control at a local scale, like traffic lights, metering. And we also have some regional level control schemes, sometimes, you know, information and, uh, other mechanisms, and there's also social interactions among people that may impact the transportation system's control and uh, you know people's choices, right? So the figure here shows you know how the system works from your home or from the warehouse to you know going into through this complicated transportation systems and it goes to your either your workplace or the um, you know the, the your destination whenever it is, right? But mathematically, you can also describe 
the system from local to local, regional, social level, we, you know, mathematically, and that can be studied and also um, investigated. Next slide. So this is why we sort of, you know, been thinking about and working on this so-called uh, multi-scale um, um, traffic simulation platform. We think that might help us to provide a platform that we can study this multi-scale system, you know, look at the interactions, dynamics, both within the, the same scale or and, you know, across different scales. And uh, this would uh, include so-called um, micro simulation, which we many of us familiar with, like you know, we have talked about Vsim, we 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 talk about Pyramix in the past, we talk about Sumo, that is a you know a open source um, system that's been more and more uh, used now. We also talk about macro simulation, right? The different tools. There are also vehicle simulation. So we try to sort of combine things together in this platform, you know, kind of holistic way to some extent. Next slide. So the really this is built on what we have done before with Citrus Smart that, that in the past or the previous project we've been developing a, mainly a vehicle simulation plus a micro traffic simulation. So we used Unity as the vehicle simulation to simulate especially connected autonomous vehicles, and we use Sumo as a micro traffic simulation to simulate traffic, and we um, put these two together by. Uh, uh, you know, creating these uh, communication layers between the two, data transmission, uh, you know, messages uh, exchange between the two. And we also use a very small uh, scale like, uh, you know, test vehicle, as you can see from the um, right lower corner, uh, it's an Amazon um, uh, autonomous vehicle that we've been used uh, to kind of test this idea. Uh, next slide. Okay. Next one. Um, so in this, uh, you know, current simulation, we really try to add this so-called um, macro simulation to simulate the demand and people's activities, you know, larger scale, because in the previous one, we look at a smaller scale uh, system or networks, you know, urban, maybe over network with the vehicle simulation, but we, we, we feel like in order to look at a larger scale, we have to, you know, inc include, uh, uh, you know, the macro simulation to in order to, to kind of uh, capture the uh, bigger area um, in the in the systems. So maybe the um, one button. That, so okay, can you so the yeah yeah. So we have uh, Massim for the macro simulation. Um, that's what we plan to integrate in this current project. Next one. Um, so really, uh, what we been trying to do um, is essentially, you know, we try to come up with a design, right? So there's a uh, design framework in order to integrate the three simulation platforms um, because they are so different, right? We call traffic, uh, you know, the demand, all the activities in this, they're over different. And they, in order to integrate them, there are uh, work to do, especially the interface, how you interface uh, between the different simulation platforms and how that ensures some of the consistency when you do this integration. Um, so I think Ohe will take over from here to talk about, okay, how we develop this multi-scale simulation platform we call VTD um, and, uh, you know, um, how these uh, different uh, key aspects can be, can be addressed. Um, okay, you can take over from here. Okay, um, so this is our detailed design framework. Um, of the communication between Sumo, Massim, Unity, and uh, the Professor Ben just mentioned a real 118th scale vehicle, AWS Deep Racer, which we included in our previous research project. And um, we're going to focus on the integration between Sumo, Massim, and Unity today. And this design framework goes with the concept that um, Massim manages the overall transportation simulation, um, while Sumo handles the local transportation simulation and Unity runs the uh, just single vehicle scale visualization based on what happened in the local or the Sumo transportation simulation. And uh, all the communications are pr 
processed and transmitted through the control center. Uh, with that said, we can split the design framework as the Sumo math team and Sumo Unity communications in general. Um, so now we first uh, see between the communication between Sumo and Massim. Uh, the control center plays a bridge role between the two when the simulation is launched. Um, Massim begins to run its simulation. Then it sends the traffic flow information back to Sumo and next Sumo begins to send the simulation states such as locations or our observed or our ego vehicle and traffic signal phases to the control center. And then the vehicle algorithm and the signal algorithm in our CAS class, uh, which is the connected, connected and automated transportation systems begins to calculate the optimal way driving and changing signal phases. And the new signal actions are sent back to Sumo for the local simulation. And then um, the control center sends the Sumo vehicle states to massing for the macro scale simulation. And we will get into the um, Sumo massing interaction details in a couple of slides. So the second one is uh, the framework of Sumo Unity communication. The communication is uh, just working under Sumo simulations. And between the Sumo and Unity communication, all the messages are also transmitted through the control center. And the overall process is when Sumo is simulating the updated traffic states, including traffic signal phases, network information, and the vehicle's locations are packaged as a message that transmitted to Unity for visualization. And after um, Unity finishes the current visualization, it will let Sumo know that uh, Unity has been ready to take the other simulation states for a new visualization. But before the Unity is ready, Sumo stays at the same simulation step until it gets the uh, ready response from Unity. Um, so before going, getting into the development details of each step, I'd like to introduce the tools we're using and the reasons uh, why we chose them. So in the multi-scale VTD simulation platform, we use Massim as the macroscopic simulation model to be in charge of the macro perspective transportation sim simulation. And um, Sumo to be our local simulation model, which can handle the vehicle to vehicle interaction simulation. And Unity 3D as our visualization model as it is not a high hardware demanding software and um, has a great flexibility to visualize, visualize anything. Um, so first we get into the uh, massing, the macroscopic simulation model. So although there are several options that we can choose from, but considering that we need to use a uh, macroscopic simulation model interacting with other simulation platforms, such as Sumo or other, other things. Um, Massim's, so one of the uh, features in Massim that is open source, um, it's open source feature outstands over other options. So uh, th this is one of the key points we, cho we chose Massim as our macroscopic simulation model. Moreover, um, Massim is able to handle large scale and private public multimodal traffic scenarios. And it has the flexibility to custom our models through implementing Java. Um, here we walk through an overview of Massim framework. Um, Massim is an agent-based simulation model. Um, it simulates traffic dynamics at a large scale and models travelers' day-to-day -day activity schedules. Um, basically, it uses an iteration process 
to achieve an equilibrated state of the system. So in this process, uh, first the initial demand, including travel plans and travelers information uh, is the input for massive simulation. And uh, the demand is obtained from different sources to generate a synthetic population to represent a population in the study area. And then uh, the score, scoring process calculates the scores of agents plans. And then uh, a fraction of agents are allowed to randomly modify their plans. Uh, so uh, after replanning, the scoring process simulates and gives scores to the agent plans again. Uh, so the all the this process forms a uh, iterate, iterative loop, and this iterative process uh, continues until the whole system reaches the user equilibrium. Um, so next is Sumo. Um, well, to, uh, to as Sumo is a very great microscopic transportation, transportation simulation model. It has a clear documentation and a lot of the Sumo experts are willing to answer questions on GitHub. Um, Sumo can also handle many travelers and multimodal traffic scenarios with vehicles, uh, public transport and pedestrians. We can, oh, it, it, we can also use Python to enhance Sumo with custom, customized models to remotely control the simulation, including the traffic signals. Um, here we sh show that Sumo allows configuring the traffic signal phases in cycles. Um, and during the simulation, it displays the signals changing and vehicles turning in real time on its GUI. Okay, so jump into the Unity 3D game engine. Um, Unity has a huge flexibility that um, we can create our own environment. For, for the transportation system, there are also many assets that we can use. Um, more importantly, it allows remotely modify environment during the simulation, which many other powerful visualization tools don't allow us to do so. So this is one of the key features and reasons uh, that we, cho we chose Unity to be our visualization tool. Um, and we can also implement our own simulation models with C Sharp in Unity to control the visualization or changing the environment dynamically. Um, and also it is capable to simulate physics for object-oriented object scenarios. And because our scenarios are vehicle-oriented, so the tool is uh, really a good fit for us. Uh, here we show the Unity environment. We build our traffic sig signals and road systems by using the road architect asset. And uh, working with C Sharp, the right below image shows the results of our visualization. Um, so now we are we are getting into the interaction process between Sumo and Massim. So since Massim and Sumo are uh, different simulation models, uh, their own their their functions and the perspectives are not the same. Um, Massim is link based, while Sumo is vehicle based. But since we use Sumo for the local simulation and Massim for the entire study area simulation, our strategy is to let Sumo only manages the local area transportation. So, um, in other words, we we let Massim and Sumo communicate 
um, at the boundary of the local area. And SUMO's initial configuration is based on the massing simulation results. So the overall interaction process is that we first let Massim run the simulation for the entire study area to get the initial route of each agent. And then we split the trips into several pieces according to when and where vehicles run into the local area. And in the local area, we run SUMO simulation to get the local simulation results. And then based on the SUMO simulation arrival times, uh, we generate a set of new massing travelers schedules and run massing again. Um, so for example, if we get a massing home to work route of person A, um, the route pass through the SUMO area, we then cut the route into three pieces and let SUMO handles the trip to simulation. And um, in the SUMO configuration, the departure and arrival time and locations are based on the massing results. Um, we will get into the, the details in a minute. Um, so because massing network is rougher than SUMO, to split the, the routes, we need to know where is the local area in massing network. So the first step is to match links between SUMO and massing. And um, we first categorize the link directions into eight categories, and then calculate the distances between massing and SUMO networks with the links pointing the same direction. For example, here we um, focus on massing link I. Um, if the link I points category one, we pick all the links in SUMO with the direction in category one and find the closest sumo link to the massing link I as the match. But there, um, sometimes we have the cases that more than one massing links match to one sumo link, um, but it is fine because it doesn't matter how many links a vehicle traveled in massing because the the um, all the links in massing, uh, the vehicle traveled in massing, they can group as a uh, unit represents the link, the same link in the sumo area. In this case, um, we then output the link match list as shown in the bottom right. Um, then we configure the the sumo input. Um, we only give SUMO the departure and arrival links and departure and arrival times to let SUMO run the, all the uh, process in the middle and all the behaviors of vehicle behaviors in the middle. And the link, the link ID and the time information are from the massing simulation results. Um, so we put several event handlers in Massim to record each vehicle's entering time of each link. Then um, based on the Massim sumo link match list, we extract the departure and arrival time and link IDs from the Massim output and use this output to generate the sumo configuration. So um, one example of the split result is like this we generate the route.xml file in SUMO to assign each vehicle's departure arrival links and times inside the SUMO area and um, let SUMO run the simulation. So um, as our previous example shows, SUMO only modeled the trip to simulation and next we generate the split massing schedules based on the SUMO's arrival time. Um, and then we generate the MASIM configuration. So in this example, uh, the trip one's arrival time and the trip three departure time are changed based on SUMO's simulation results. And then we run MASIM simulation 
for trip one and trip three. Okay, so now um, we introduce the Sumo Unity integration. Um, Sumo, in our design, Sumo has two types of, in of information, static and dynamic information. Um, the role that our Eagle vehicle is initially on and locations of traffic signals are the static information um, and the signal phase vehicle states and the incoming road system are the dynamic information. So the reason that we categorize the initial road and incoming road is that we like to reduce the laptop memory consumption. Um, based on our experience, the typical everyday productivity laptop with just two core CPU and 16 gigabyte memory is not able to handle an urban size visualization in, in Unity. So we modify network in real time by adding the incoming road system each time right before the Eagle vehicle gets into a new road, inter new road system, such as in a new intersection. Um, and removing the road systems that are very far away from our Eagle vehicles. So the um, overall process of visualization is that um, Sumo interacts with the signal and vehicle control algorithms first by transmitting the signal and vehicle states, then Sumo sends the, stat the updated static and dynamic information to Unity for the visualization. Um, so inside Unity design, uh, Unity generates the road system based upon the type of road from the messages from Sumo. Um, so far, we design straight and intersection road systems in Unity. Um, the two types of row systems are pre-built in Unity. And um, Unity adds a new module to the row system in the corresponding location in Sumo. And the straight row system is for the Eagle vehicle traveling a long distance down a straight road before arriving at an intersection. Um, but when the, the Eagle vehicle arrives at at an intersection, Unity adds an intersection module on the straight road. Um, this can reduce the memory consumption and also uh, visualize the current uh, transportation behavior in, in Sumo. Um, so this procedure can perfectly feed fit the intersection system, but apparently it cannot handle all the road systems in our study area, such as the highlighted in orange. Um, so now we are building, uh, checking and building and categorizing all other road categories in our study area. Um, there are the other two visualizer functions in Unity. First, the vehicle visualizer extracts the vehicle information from Sumo and uh, splits the information into three subjects, the existing vehicles and the left vehicles and the newly arrived vehicles. Then um, Unity removes the left vehicles and creates record of the um, any that are newly arrived and updates the location and heading and goals of those are already existing. And the signal visualizer sorts the signal set um, into clockwise order, beginning with the northern side. Uh, for instance, if the road system has three lanes on each side of the four-way intersection, uh, we will have 12 signals in total. Um, and the three signals facing in the same direction are considered to be a set. And the signal visualizer assigns each signal phase set 
to the corresponding traffic lights. So um, we use um, the, all the logics the above um, to implement a test case uh, in a greater Seattle area. This area, including Seattle and um, Bellevue regions as our study area. And the downtown Seattle is the local region that we like to observe more. So, um, so this is our um, downtown Seattle area uh, in, in our sumo simulation. Um, the study region begins from the north, uh, Mercer Street and Atlantic Street, uh, Alaskan Way and 12th Avenue. Um, and we have the available network feature, pedestrian lane, bus stop, link light rail, and um, traffic analyze, analysis zone. And um, because of the because of the road network, um, our, our road network uh, consisting of two network shared files. Uh, the shared file in Seattle area is from Seattle DOT, and uh, the Bellevue region is from the Bellevue DOT. Um, they have different attributes, so we first make an assumption on networks. So, to let both of their attributes to be consistent. Um, and we treat the freeway links in Seattle area and the highway links in Bellevue as the model way. And um, prin principal arterial in Seattle and the major arterial in Bellevue as the primary links and the collector and minor arterial in both Seattle and Bellevue as the secondary links um, and the counting arterials in Seattle and other arterials in Bellevue as the tertiary links. Um, we also did some pre-processing. First, we combined the two maps through connecting the state route 520 and I-90. And then um, we fixed the wrong road directions. So, for the Seattle part, we fix those segments uh, with the segments directions opposite to the real road directions. But for the Bellevue part, since the shift file doesn't have the road direction information, so we directly compare the one-way roads with the open street map and fix the, the wrong road directions. So um, then we run the overall simulation. Um, so here we can, uh, I guess we can run this. So we can directly skip to the jumping to the 46 seconds and okay it's not very clear in my laptop so So um, for the 46 second, um, we can see uh, the three, the overall, well, the overall vehicle ID the, the has three numbers. The first number means the, the traveler ID and the second number means the purpose, um, trip purpose. Um, zero means the work, home to work and one means work to home trip. And, um, the third number represents the, how many trips of each traveler updated. So if the number starts with zero, means the traveler hasn't um, entered in Sumo area yet. Once the traveler passed through the Sumo area, the number plus one. But uh, I'm not sure if you can see clearly because
right now we're seeing the two uh, initial results and the, the simulation on the right side. Yeah. Right. So I'm 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 not sure if you can see the uh, three one one traveler in this right hand side video. No, we can't. But why don't you run the simulation for a bit and see how it goes? It seems okay. you start, right? Oh, okay. Let me share it once again. Oh. Okay, so, um, no, I so, see. Maybe, so the numbers, the numbers are right above the, uh, yeah, right above the, the, yeah, green triangle and uh, the, the first, so we can see the three, one, zero here, this one. And because uh, we, uh, I, I, I should synchronize this, both of this visualization, but I, I didn't. Um, so we can see that three one zero um, gets into this downtown area and it disappears because it enters to the sumo simulation. You can see here. Uh, so now the three one zero comes into the. Uh, sumo simulation. And then if we keep running, this, we can see this 1910 um, would disappear as well. Yeah. And then now the 1910 is is here in a uh, sumo simulation. And so if the this 2211 here uh, means that in the beginning, we, we can go back to the beginning that we can see that 2210 here gets into the sumo area first and then it passed through the downtown Seattle area um, and then uh, get back into the massing network. So the, the, the third number plus one, uh, this one is 2211. Okay, so for the implementation between um, Sumo Unity system, So then we can see now um, this part is the, the sumo simulation and this part is the unity simulation. Now we are in the perspective of the purple vehicle here. So you can see that um, this vehicle, um, we, can, we can see that uh, in unity we can uh, Synchronize all the vehicle behaviors with Sumo. Oh, okay. So this is the second. Um, this is the second tra traffic signal, and then uh, it goes all the way to the third uh, traffic signals. Okay. So yeah, so this is the this is the implementation between Sumo and Unity system. And uh, our ongoing work is to first two um, is to calibrate massing and sumo. Um, so during the massing calibration, we are planning to uh, calibrate the speed factor, then capacity factor for freeways and arterials. And also validate the traffic counts data uh, between the simulated results and observations. 
So our demand data will be 2014 survey data from PSRC and the validation data um, will be the 2014 WSDOT track flow data and national performance management research data set. And uh, for the SUMO calibration, we would like to minimize the differences between the real and simulated travel time and traffic volume across all vehicles. And we will try to use um, as much as we can the, the same data set as the massing calibration uses. So um, the validation data in SUMO would be also the 2014 WSDOT track flow data and census data from the Seattle DOT and also the NPMRDS data. And when we finish this calibrate, these two calibrations, uh, we will test a real traffic scenarios and uh, explore the regional macroscopic fundamental diagram. Okay. Um, thank you for your attention. I'm okay. happy to take okay. any questions. Thank you very much, Ohe and uh, Jeff. So we have a couple of questions. Um, I think the first one refers to around slide 15, and it's um, does the, sc the scoring that you've developed, is it based on the generalized cost function or just the travel time cost? Uh, so far, we just use the travel time cost. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, another attendee is asking if you could um, explain again or in more detail the integration of the SUMO and MATSIM links. Uh, the integration sumo link is massive link. Okay. Uh, let me go back to the. Okay, I guess it's this one. So the integration between sumo and massive is just, um, I, I, I guess this one, this, this one is, is better to explain. So the basic idea between the integration be, uh, between SUMO and MASIM is to, is to see, to generate the first route information from MASIM and see uh, where and when the vehicles get into the SUMO area. So we need to know the MASIM route, um, the MASIM network, where is the SUMO or the local area in Massim work network. So, what we did is to um, to first to um, categorize each of the links direction. So, for example, this Massim link, um, the the direction categorized will be uh, category four here, so that we uh, pick up pick all of the SUMO links that have the same direction, like category four uh, to the massive links, and then to calculate the dis distances between the SUMO links to the ma massive link I. And then we find the closest SUMO link uh, to this massive link I as our um, SUMO and massive match list. And okay. from th from this list, we can we can say uh, we can split the the trip. Um, from this massive network and um, to get the boundary of the sumo link, and to get when and where the a new vehicle get into the sumo area and leave the sumo area. So we have a couple of questions that made their way to the chat that I think maybe the audience might be interested in. Um, so what criteria do you use to calibrate and validate your MATSIM and SUMO models? Uh, we would use, uh, okay. We would use the travel time and travel count basically. 
So um, to to calibrate, okay. So the to validate all the calibration, we will use the, the travel time and travel counts to validate this calibration quali uh, qualifi qualification. And for the cali calibration, uh, we first calibrate the speed factor. We we're going to plan, uh, calibrate the speed factor and the capacity factor between the um, the massing simulation results, the massing simulation speeds of each link and the observed uh, observed observation, the speed, the real speed on the real network, and also the link capacity as well. So another question just come in. Will integrating the different simulation packages require additional effort to maintain the latest information, the latest network information for all the software? Right. Um, so, so I kind of lost <clears throat> what. So you're main, oh, you're please. since you're you're integrating the different packages simultaneously, does this require additional, I guess, computational effort? Or, or other to maintain, um, to get like active latest network information for all the software at once? So we just uh, reduce the memory uh, consumption for Unity because the, that is the most difficult difficult part for us to, to visualize uh, in our daily laptop. But uh, overall we use a TCP IP and then we let the, the strategy we use is to let the Sumo run its iteration, run its uh, each time step, wait for the Unity to say, okay, it's ready, and then Sumo to run the next iteration, uh, or uh, to run the next time step, and then update this Unity visualization. And then when Unity gets ready, and then Sumo runs the next run to make sure that uh, everything is act, uh, active in real time. Okay, so brief interlude to just thank the audience so far. This is a great active discussion. Keep the questions coming, this is great. We have another one. So since one of the stated goals of uh, this research is to use this platform to simulate CAV movement, are you also considering calibrating the models to include some safety related parameters um, since those are so crucial to CAV work? Um, yeah, yes, that, that would be our, yes, that would be our future works, uh, to also calibrate the safety related parameters. Yes. Uh, that's a really good point. Yeah. Yeah. Let's, let's say a few, um, words on this. I think, uh, yeah, this is a, a really good question. Um, the current, um, focus is, uh, on developing this, uh, multi-scale platform. Yes. For future work, we do need to if we plan to simulate or study CV, we have to sort of integrate the CV behavior um, into the simulation framework. Yeah, uh, maybe calibrate some of their CV specific parameters or their um, specific routing behavior or, um, you know, the lane changing or car following behavior. So this also need to be uh, considered in the future if, if this is uh, what we plan to pursue. And also the freight, I think, uh, Jenny also had this question about freight. Um, we currently, we're not um, 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 particularly for some uh, freight, but that's also, um, uh, you know, the plan, uh, especially we are uh, planning to work with uh, Professor Joe Charles group on the freight aspect. We, we haven't started yet, but that's in the, in the plan. Okay, also uh, participants in the webinar, you can also feel free if you're, for those of us who want to use our voices, you can raise your hand and I'll call on you as well. Um, Professor Vaughn, I'm actually very glad that you brought up uh, Professor Chow. I was going to ask you, um, since it seems like you're familiar with the research, if you could, if you could talk how, about how his, his work and his team's work might have informed uh, yours, or if you might highlight the differences between the work being done in New York with Matsum NYC and this current research project. Yeah, um, so uh, Joe's team has started uh, a while back uh, using Massim to study various um, aspects of transportation. I think in New York City area, um, I believe by, you know, the shared mobility and other aspect, freight is one particular uh, focus. 
of his work, um, but um, and also there are work with Yudin Sumo and others. But um, I think integrating the different skills of the simulation into one platform is probably the focus of this one, uh, you know, our project. Um, so there are um, uh, different ways of uh, you know working together. One of that is to look at the freight movement in the region and then detailed movement in, in the uh, downtown area. You know how you know you not only simulate um, you know you many simulation micro simulation. They look at you know the detailed uh, freight movement in a in a small area. But if you look at the a little bit bigger area, you know the maybe the freight decisions and. Uh, some of the aspect can be also considered. Um, so this multi-skill um, framework might help in that regard. So this is, I think, one of the ideas uh, we've been um, talking with uh, Joe's group on this um, on this work. Sure, and I would invite any of, uh, there's a couple of Professor Chow students uh, here today. So I'd invite you to jump in, comment, correct us if, uh, mm -hmm. if you desire. So um, I, I'm curious, uh, Jeff and Ohei, if you could speak a little bit more about these benefits of the multiple simultaneous scales of simulation, and maybe how you envision either this research or later iterations of this research might ultimately be implemented by agency and industry. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the benefits um, can be maybe two um, lines, or maybe, you know, maybe there are more, but at least from my understanding is you know, the multi-skill, as I uh, indicated earlier, multi-skill kind of perspective is very natural for the transportation system. Um, and in my lab, uh, particularly, we are very keen to this, to kind of understand um, and study in this multi-skill framework, what are the key dynamics, what are the key interactions, especially across different layers, um, and how to model that mathematically, and how to simulate and uh, you know collect data and study those right so the simulation provide some very useful platform to you know collect some data to sort of uh, study those interactions and dynamics so that's one you know um you know aspect of this multi-scale uh, platform and secondly i think it can also help to do very um, important pra practical um, um evaluation or study of you know, different modes, like uh, if, if you look at a freight, you know, it's one aspect, right, on um, trucks, um, because they run not only, you know, downtown, but they run across uh, bigger areas. And some of the decisions, you know, from the warehouse to the destination um, can be, can may not be able to be modeled in this downtown kind of scenario. You have to model a larger area, you know, where they are coming from and they're, where they are going to. Um, this is sometimes the same for, even for uh, people driving long distances or um, you know um, buses and other modes, so uh, with this multi-scale systems, we can uh, easily see that kind of uh, interactions or decisions. And also, um, when you uh, try to look at um, sometimes the so-called uh, microscopic um, behavior of the traffic flow, you need to look at um, you know larger scale um, systems. Um, but at the same time. Um, when you understand this, you know, macro level behavior, how that can be used to inform the local control, let's say signal control or some other vehicle control aspect. Um, those kind of naturally have this, uh, you know, uh, different skills, you know, the interaction and uh, transformation between different skills. I think the, the platform may enable us to study those kind of um, um, research problems. Yeah, I hope that- hey, Great. Helps. Yeah. yeah, no, that's that's great. Um, and I think we're just about out of time. So I just want to make some closing remarks. Uh, so first, I want to, again, acknowledge funding by USDOT for, for uh, some of this research effort. If you enjoyed this webinar, definitely follow the C2 Smart Center on Twitter and LinkedIn. I'm actually going to place those links in the chat right now. And um, I just encourage you to reach out to our presenters to learn more about their research. And uh, lastly, please feel free to reach out if there's a topic you'd like to see covered or if you're interested in partnering with the C2 Smart Center to leverage the research expertise of our consortium. Um, Professor Van Ohe and uh, Yuran, thank you so much for uh, being with us today and presenting your great research. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you. Thank, thank you, John. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. All right. Take care. Bye-bye.